Hello, uh, my name's Sue Richards and I'm Director of Strategic Capability at the National School of Government and it's a real pleasure to be sitting here talking to Professor Kerry Cooper um, who is Professor of Organisational Psychology and Health at Lancaster University but also uh, the founding chairman of the Sunningdale Institute which is the National School's uh, virtual academy of thought leaders drawn together uh, from across academia and and other places. Kerry, um, it's it's great to talk to you. Yeah, it's great to be here. Good, and to be sitting here uh, with time to just uh, talk about your key area um, of workplace stress. Tell me, you know, tell me what the the key dimensions are of the issue of workplace stress. Yeah. Why does it matter to us? I think it's beginning to matter now because it's become a kind of bottom line issue. If you take a look at invalidity benefit, nearly 40% of it in the UK, which is, amounts to billions of pounds, is to do with mental Ill health and stress at work. If you look at the sickness absence rate, in the old days, back pain was the major cause of sickness absence in the UK economy. But with the kind of pressures on people at work these days, the long-term sickness absence effects of stress are astronomical, both in the public and the private sector. So it's become a kind of bottom line issue, the whole area, Sue, of mental well-being at work. And it's become bottom line not just because we want to make people healthier, but because the productivity and the performance of people is being inhibited by people being too stressed out in the workplace. So why is this happening, Kerry? Why is it happening? Well, there are a lot of factors, I think, So One of them is just change. You think about what's happened to the UK ever since the 1980s. You're talking about an economy that has undergone massive change, more change than probably, certainly, than any economy or any society in the whole of Europe. We become very Americanized, very much. Jobs are much more insecure. People are working longer hours than ever before. Uh, we have now much more performance indicators on us, whether it's the public sector or the private sector. Uh, management is becoming more bottom line orientated, performance indicator orientated. And at the same time that's happened, where we had the kind of natural counselors in our environment, you know, the extended family, the communities we lived in, are no longer there because people have got on their bikes, went to get jobs in different parts of the country. And we no longer have the social support systems of the extended family. We no longer have the social support systems of the community we lived in because we're so mobile. So we see people much more vulnerable than ever before and having to undergo enormous change. And that change, by the way, has been good for our economy. We're the fourth leading economy in the world. Let's be positive about it. On the other hand, there's a downside to it. And the downside is that people are more insecure than ever before, are having to work long hours, are trying to juggle family and, and work life when two out of every three couples are now working couples. So we have more problems than we ever had before. Mm. So, I mean, what, what are the dimensions of it? What, what makes people stressed out? Because, uh, in, in a sense, you know, we're all subject to pressure, aren't we? When, when does pressure become stress? I think you're right to make the differentiation there between the word pressure and stress. Pressure is stimulating. There's nothing wrong with it. Most professional people, most people, for example, in the civil service and the public sector, like a certain amount of pressure. It, it stimulates and makes them feel important, makes them feel their job's important. But when pressure exceeds your ability to cope, then you're in the stress arena. And I'm afraid we're seeing more of that now. I think we're seeing more of it because of the rapidity of change. People are not able to accommodate the pace of change as much and they also don't feel in control of that change. Control becomes a kind of critical issue here and people don't feel a part of the, uh, of the process of the decision making that affects their jobs and so on and even their outside life has changed. With two out of every three families now working families working long hours uh, and commuting in long distances they don't feel they, they can devote the kind of time to their families and they have divided loyalties between work and, and family life, and that's creating enormous problems. There, there are two things I want to pick up from what you've just said. Um, the last one, um, and its implications for social policy more generally, but perhaps first, just go back to this issue of control. Um, is it the case then that it's those at the bottom of the hierarchy who are more subject to stress? 
than, than those at the top. Is, uh, are people at the top, maybe they talk about stress a lot, but they're not as stressed as others in the organisation. Who does it really hit? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. If you take a look over several decades, you'll find maybe a decade or two ago, the people at the bottom of the, organiz uh, the organization, whether it was in a civil service or public sector generally or in the private sector, the people at the bottom who didn't have as much control were not involved in decision makings, were the people who suffered the stress-related illnesses. Even, would you believe, heart disease was more prevalent among working class people than it was the executive disease, because it used to be called the executive disease, heart disease, and yet heart disease was much more prevalent among people on the shop floor than people at the top end of the socioeconomic ladder. However, now as jobs become more secure from top floor to shop floor, insecure, insecure I mean, as more people at the top are just as vulnerable, whether it's in the private sector, or the civil service, or the public sector generally, then you're seeing the stress levels going higher and higher. Even though the civil service study shows that people at the top, this is a big study by Michael Marmot, great study, it's been done over a series of years, shows that people who are in control, i.e. further up the top of the spectrum, are less likely to suffer stress and, and a range of cardiovascular and other illnesses. Uh, my own perception is, given that the civil service is still reasonably well protected at that level, that's the case, but as they become more vulnerable, as the senior and top civil servants and people in the public sector generally become more vulnerable, and they will, it's coming as we speak this day, you're going to find that the stress levels and the ill health levels and the stress-related illnesses we're going to, are going to move up the hierarchy. So it's no longer the people at the bottom because jobs are intrinsically more insecure for all. Mm.